Madeleine Skuman quit the comfort of being headmistress at the esteemed Victoria Girls High School to work at Nsika Secondary, a poorly resourced township school with many challenges such as textbook and teacher shortages. We haven't had enough maths and science teachers since 2008. Um, so every single year there have been classes without teachers, no matter what we do. How are you coping with maths? Um, we don't know much about maths because we don't have a maths teacher. Grade nines in particular are sometimes very dissatisfied with not having a teacher. And you can understand that because maths is a gateway subject. They need that and they, they're not being taught properly. So we use some volunteers, we got a student teacher in term three, but it's a big problem for us. You don't have an English teacher? So what happens in English class? We don't get an English lesson. When was the last time you had one? In April. In April? What school and what grade are you in? Nambulelo grade 10. Are there other kids who don't have teachers for some classes? Yeah, I think there are five classes. Right? Yeah. Maybe yeah. There are five five teachers. Classes. So does it feel to you like you, you, you're missing out? Do you feel worried? No, And what do you do in, in English class? Do you just go home? Sit outside. 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 <laughs> it's just, it's just, it, it's pointless. You're not offering education. Yeah. You're offering babysitting with a little bit of teaching on the side. It's not the, t the then the school is just a, it's just a place for the kids to be. Education activist and historian Nomalanga Nkize offers extra classes to high school learners from schools in and around Grahamstown. Our program is trying to teach core subjects English. And maths. Obviously for kids they panic when they um, feel that they're not getting everything they need to get and extra programs that they should be getting in the classroom but um, there's very little that uh, the community can do to fill in for teachers. Teachers are necessary in the system. They are supposed to be there to take care of the curriculum. I cannot fill in the curriculum. Extra hands cannot fill in the curriculum. We can, you cannot replace teachers. To delve deeper into the root of the problem, we went to speak to Sarah Sefton, the regional director of the Legal Resources Centre in Grahamstown. In September of the year preceding the school year, the department has to declare a post basket. So they make a declaration that there'll be, for example, 64,000 educator posts in the Eastern Cape, and then they share those posts up amongst schools. So each school then receives a post allocation saying this will be your post establishment for 2012. But what happened this last year is that as soon as the 2012 educator post establishment was declared it was contested by SATU which is the South African Democratic Teachers Union and then that, that contestation didn't go anywhere it just kind of hung in the courts so posts weren't actually filled. The 2012 post establishment is to severely to our disadvantage. It doesn't take um, cognizance of the curriculum or the curriculum needs and the compulsory subjects, the number of learners. It only looks at the number of learners you have and then say based on that you get 29 to 1 ratio therefore you need so many teachers which assumes that everyone is qualified to teach everything and that your principal, your management team, that everyone will be teaching full loads. So we took the Department of Education to court on behalf of the Centre for Child Law and a whole lot of schools in the Eastern Cape. Uh, we asked for an order to compel the department to fill the 2012 Educator Post establishment, first on a temporary basis and then on a permanent basis. And then we also asked for an order that they pay all of the temporary teachers that they had appointed because a number of temporary teachers had been appointed but not paid. And then we also, as part of that, asked for an order that they declare the 2013 post-establishment. The court order is pretty much on track. They've paid a few thousand temporary educators. We know that there's still some outstanding posts that haven't been filled, but there's movement. The, the majority of them are, have been filled or are being filled. Despite optimism on behalf of the LRC, DA spokesperson for education in the Eastern Cape begs to differ. And the High Court judgment has indicated that 
by the 3rd of September, all posts should have been filled on a temporary basis. Now, unfortunately, that has not happened. Uh, it is also indicated by uh, the 17th of August, all teachers who have not received their salaries should have received their salaries. And unfortunately, that has not happened. Now, would your 2013 post, provision, uh, post provisioning declaration, there will be 3,932 posts less than what we had in 2012. In 2012, there were 64,752 posts, and in the 2013, there will be 60,820. So that brings your total of 3,932 less posts than in 2012. What does that mean? It means that 3,932 uh, 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 temporary teachers' uh, uh, contracts will not be renewed, and those are job losses. You see, it's, it's actually quite complicated because it's not necessarily that there's a shortage, it's that there are teachers where they there's teachers in excess. They're teachers that are sitting at schools where they're not supposed to be. And due to a movement of learners and a um, change in subjects, for example, there's not, some schools have got more teachers than, than funded posts. And other schools have got less teachers than funded posts. It's not easy to move teachers um, because pe teachers are people and they have preferences. You cannot just say, well, there's a school in some neighborhood far away which needs a math teacher or an English teacher. Well, you're t there's too many here. Why don't you move? I mean, why would I move when my family and my life is in one space and maybe I've got a partner or a children or my own social setting that I'm accustomed to? Now the department wants me to move somewhere else. If they don't move the teachers that are in excess to where they need it, and they hire temporary teachers for where they need it, they're paying, it's called double parking, they're paying two teachers for one post. To find out more about the budget, we enlisted the help of Zukizwa Korta, an education researcher at the Public Service Accountability Monitor. We, from the very beginning of the financial year, estimated that there would definitely be, at the rate that the department was going, there would definitely be over-expenditure in the personnel line item already. Looking at the number of um, temporary educators within the system, as well as the current, the current staff. So we'd estimated about, you know, around 2 billion rand, and it looks to be above that. So for the 2012-13 financial year, um, the budget was has is 26 in excess of 26 billion rand, um, whereas in 20 in the previous financial year it was 24, um, 24 billion. Yeah. Of that, um, you know, the allocated the allocated sum for the for the financial year for expenditure on personnel um, was is supposed to be 80 more or less 80 percent um, of of that. So around about 21 21 billion. We are also aware that the department, uh, you know, has has said that the changes or the cuts in, in numbers of teachers is in response to um, changes in learner numbers. And here we read that the changes in learner numbers will result in the upgrading of some schools and downgrading of others. The upgrading of a school for two consecutive years results in the upgrading of the school's principal salary level. So that's also bound to have changes in terms of um, the budget. The learner enrollment in the Eastern Cape has shown a steady decrease over the past three years. The average decline for the past five years is 2.6%. There, there needs to be perhaps more information relating to how that relates to teacher numbers and what particular, what particular posts, um, what the changes will mean in terms of the, the teacher decreases. Well, it'll be interesting to know exactly where they are cutting them, and I would assume it's going to be from those temporary posts or wherever. But they haven't managed to uh, implement the 2012 post-establishment. Now we are, they're late with the 2013 post-establishment. All of the schools should have received their post-establishments, but they haven't got them yet. But as soon as my clients get their post-establishments, the individual school post-establishments, then we'll really be able to have a good look at, at what does this mean. Best case scenario, if our court case is implemented in full, then 
we're going to have teachers have been appointed permanently by the 2nd of November. So that means that there's not going to be a huge crisis with temporary educators. It is the role of the state and us as citizens to formulate a coherent plan to determine how teachers are going to be distributed in a system that is struggling, that is uneven, that is unequal. If all you care about is the learners, oh, the learners need teachers in front of them, you're missing the, pick, the point. It's the teachers that determine the quality of our education system. You've got to realize that actually where I am, I can do this. I cannot actually change at the moment what they're doing at national level, but what I can do here can have consequences that can be vast. And if we don't get to that point, whether you are the district director or the maths teacher or the child in the class, you've got to accept responsibility for what you are doing here.